The ending of Mass Effect 3 is probably one of gaming's most controversial decisions in recent memory. It spawned the indoctrination theory, anger, and of course the extended cut DLC. But today we're going to be looking at something a little bit more obscure in regarding to that oh so controversial ending. Hi, it's Dreamer from Mass Effect Odyssey, and today we're going to be asking what, or should we say, who is the catalyst? The catalyst, or what we believe to be the catalyst, is supposedly the key in allowing the Crucible to work and stop the Reapers. What we're shown in Mass Effect 3 is the AI construct created by Leviathan to, as quoted by Leviathan, to solve the eternal inevitable conflict between organics and synthetic life, with a mandate to preserve life at any cost. The lesser species were in our thrall, serving our needs. We grew more powerful than they would care for. But we could not protect them from themselves. Over time, the species built machines that then destroyed them. Tribute does not flow from a dead race. To solve this problem, we created an intelligence with a mandate to preserve life at any cost. As the intelligence evolved, it studied the development of civilizations. Its understanding grew until it found a solution. In that instant, it betrayed us. It chose our kind as the first harvest. From our essence, the first reaper was created. You call it Harbinger. This led to the creation of the reapers that would harvest all advanced life every 50,000 years to gather information and therefore aim to find a solution. Along the way, their original mandate to protect life became perverted and became extreme. Writer Phil Owens from Gamefront draws comparisons to this to the extreme escalation of Isaac Asimov's first law of robotics that normally dictates that a robot shall not injure a human being or by an action allow a human being to be harmed. This means that in order to protect the concept of civilization, the needs of the individual are disregarded for the greater good. That means, theoretically in the eyes of the AI, the harvest possesses a greater good for all organics and a stopgap measure in preventing total chaos. All we know about the Crucible is that it's some sort of super weapon that was first designed by an unknown race, something that we'll discuss in a future video, and was built upon cycle after cycle until it reaches completion in Shepard's cycle. We also don't know very much about how it works, but we all know that it kind of relies on the relay network and interlocks with the Citadel, providing it tremendous amounts of energy. These two specifications is what some people have thought as evident that the Crucible may not be a super weapon created by an ancient race, but actually designed by the Reaper AI itself. This would explain why its design is so heavily reliant on Reaper tech. There's also the fact that the Reapers actively knew about the Crucible and past experiences from the previous cycles should have indicated that it would come along eventually. However, they don't really make any attempts to stop the Crucible's construction and even allow Shepard to use it at the end. With cycle after cycle of experiences and seeing how the galaxy would react, why would they have not had a solution for the Crucible? For context, the Leviathan of Dis, a reaper destroyed by Leviathan and fed with Vitarians, was thought to be around a billion years old. But why? Why would the Reaper AI construct a super weapon for its own destruction? The AI is meant to find a solution to the eternal conflict between organics and synthetics, and on the surface, in order to prevent galactic destruction, they wipe the slate clean every 50,000 years. If we look at Shepard's cycle, we see the conflict between the Geth and the Quarians. This conflict started when the Geth eventually became sentient and wanted freedom, with the Quarians wanting to subjugate them. This led to war that seems to escalate with each game. In fact, this part seems to translate into every recorded cycle. Organics create synthetics to make their life easier, only to try to suppress them when those synthetics become self-aware of their existence. The AI itself claims that it wants to preserve all life in synthetic and organic, but it still believes that the conflict is inevitable, as it seems to believe that synthetics need to evolve and surpass their creators, which is something the creator will never allow or understand. In essence, the AI believes that the understanding and cooperation between these two groups is impossible at this time. You've said that before, but how do the Reapers solve anything? Organics create synthetics to improve their own existence, but those improvements have limits. To exceed those limits, synthetics must be allowed to evolve. 
They must, by definition, surpass their creators. The result is conflict, destruction, chaos. It is inevitable. Reapers harvest all life, organic and synthetic, preserving them before they are forever lost to this conflict. So instead of looking at the cycles as the implementation of a flawed solution, let's look at the cycle as a failure to achieve the solution. Even from the first cycle, there's been a lack of cooperation. The Leviathan subjugates lesser species, the Protheans did the same, and even in the current cycle, you see the Genophage, the Geth Quarren conflict, and even rampant slavery. Both the Reapers and Leviathan both take a very special interest in Shepard because something makes them special. Now, it could be the fact that they're a badass and a survivor, but it's more likely in their ability to foster understanding and cooperation. From their teammates on a small scale to the wider galactic conflict, Shepard seems to create a united front, and this seems to be an anomaly. So I present you that the solution is in fact cooperation and understanding, which doesn't seem very easy because no recorded cycle has ever shown a pattern of mutual understanding and empathy on a large scale, until you find Shepard. Shepard acted as a spark, or a catalyst as you will, that created a united front against a common enemy, the Reapers, which may have actually adapted themselves to act as this. The AI itself does state that they were created to oversee the relations between synthetic and organic life, to establish a connection, and to be the catalyst for peace between organics and synthetics. So what better way to broker a connection than create a common enemy? The final piece of evidence is the fact that Shepard makes it on board the Crucible, and there, the AI allows them to use it. It actively allows Shepard to choose the destiny of the galaxy because it may deem Shepard to be worthy of making that choice. In regards to the synthesis ending, the AI claims that they attempted to use synthesis before but failed, mainly for the fact that organics were unwilling to use it and unable to comprehend it, and this was not something that could be forced, however it's now a viable option. This theory looks at whether, instead of simply just restarting the galaxy every 50,000 years, the Reapers were in fact testing the galaxy. Maybe the AI acts as some sort of misguided gatekeeper to the Crucible, only allowing someone who would be worthy to make the ultimate decision in regarding the fate of the galaxy. In this case, Shepard acts as a catalyst in bringing order to the galaxy and fostering peace, something that was unique in the AI's eyes. So what do you think about this crazy theory? Does it change the way you look at the Reapers? Let us know in the comments below and please check out Phil Owens' three-part analysis on the Catalyst with a link in the description below. We know this one's a bit far-fetched and a bit hard to reach, but it'd be really interesting to see what you guys think. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time.